Hey guys, what's going on? It's Dave with Evil Eye Games. Today I'm going to go into setting up Blender to export to Unreal Engine 4. We're going to cover the pipeline of how to get something from Blender into Unreal Engine 4. And we're also going to cover how to set up Blender so that it will work well with Unreal Engine. So when you start up Blender, you're going to get a screen like this. And we can get rid of the splash screen just by clicking anywhere else than that splash screen. First, what we're going to want to do is we're going to set up some user preferences. So I'm going to go up to File, and we're going to go to User Preferences. Now, in the interface here, we don't really need to do anything. Editing, don't really need to do anything in here as well. We're going to go to Input. And the first thing you might want to change is the Select Width. By default, this is set to right, which can be weird for a lot of people. So if you're in the editor window over here and you want to uh, select this cube, for example, you would have to right click on it. But uh, with this setting right here, you can switch it over to the left. So that way inside of these editor windows, you can select different components with the left click button. Next thing is we're going to go over to add-ons. And you're going to want to search for FBX. And there's this import export FBX format. You're going to want to make sure this is checked. And then if you want in the themes tab here, there's going to be some presets that you can set. Obviously, I have a uh, theme on mine right now, so it's going to look a little bit different than yours. Um, and you can change the theme and it'll just change the colors of everything. So once you're done, you're going to want to go ahead and hit save user settings and you can close out of the user preferences. Now over to our right hand side up here, you have the outline of everything that is in the scene that you're working on in a given time. So it'll show you all the different objects you have here. And then right below that, the first tab is our scene tab. And if you plan on doing any animation for games in general, right down here, there's a frame rate it's set to 24 frames per second, which is a movie frame rate, but games work at 30 frames per second. So you're going to want to go ahead and set that to 30 frames per second. And then we're going to want to go ahead and we're going to move over to here it is, uh, the third tab in the scene tab, um, under units right here, by default, it's set to none. And Blender uses its own units for measurement. And I don't know what the conversion rate is for those units over to other units. So what we're going to generally do is set the units to metric. And then with the scale right now set to 1, this is going to set the units of measurement to 1 meter. When working with environmental stuff, I prefer having it set to 1 meter. If you're working with a character or something smaller, you might want to change it down to one centimeter by entering 0.01 in there. But I generally like one as the unit of measure uh, for me. So this is going to set it up so that uh, when you scale things inside of Blender here, it is going to be at the same scaling that Unreal Engine 4 is going to be using. So next thing, we need to get rid of all the stuff in our scene here. So I'm going to hit the B key, and that's going to be the box select. And I'm just going to drag over everything in the scene. And then I'm going to hit the X key, which is going to be delete. And we're going to select the delete from the menu that pops up. And that will go ahead and get rid of everything from our scene. And then I'm going to go up to File. And we're going to go ahead and Save As. And I like to have a basic uh, empty map that we can start working from. So I just call mine blank start. And then we can go ahead and save as a Blender file. And if we want this file to start up when Blender starts up, we can go up to file. And we can select save startup file. And it'll pop up this little menu. So just click on save startup file. So that way when you start up Blender from now on, it'll start up with this file as the base load. So let's go ahead and make a basic one meter by one meter 
template that we can use and we can tile in Unreal Engine 4. So to the left here, there's going to be this menu. And you can show and hide this menu by using the T key. Now one thing to keep in mind with Blender is it is very much shortcut dependent and quick key dependent. So as you're going through tutorials and whatnot, you're probably going to want to take down a list of all the quick keys and the shortcuts and the hot keys so that you have them um, for later. There are definitely going to be some that you use more than others and you'll learn them very quickly. But it's always good to have a list of the different keys that you can use. And you can also Google them. Uh, Blender's wiki is really awesome. And it shows up a lot when Googling for different things that you want to do. So what we want to do is we want to go to create. And we want to create a plane. Now to maneuver around inside this window here, you can rotate the camera around by clicking down on the middle mouse button and moving your mouse around. So that will allow us to rotate the camera around the object. If you want to zoom in, you can roll the mouse wheel in and roll the mouse wheel out. And you can move around like that and pan around. Or uh, I'm sorry, I keep saying pan, it's, it's really rotate around. And if you want to actually pan the camera, you can hold the shift button and click down on the middle mouse button and you can pan around on the object like this. Now one of the early mistakes that people will make is at the center you see this um, cursor and if I right click around that cursor will move to where the mouse is in the 3D window. And a lot of people don't know how to get that back to the center or what it does. Basically, if we go ahead and add anything to the scene, it's going to add it at the location of the cursor. So over here, if I go ahead and add a cube, it adds it right at that cursor. So I'm going to control Z to get rid of that. We want to move this cursor back to the origin where the X and the Y are at zero and Z. So I'm going to go ahead and we're going to hit shift C and that'll do two things. That'll move our three our 3D cursor back to the center and it will also move the camera to focus in on whatever objects we have on the scene. So we have this nice little plane here and one thing you'll notice is if you rotate to the bottom of the plane it looks like a solid object and the reality is is that's not exactly how it really works. Um, this is basically four vertexes which are points in space and they're connected by these lines, which are edges. And then when the vertexes are connected by edges and there's no space in between, you have a face. Now the thing about the faces is the faces in reality only point in one direction. Now the editing software to make it easy to edit this shows both sides of the face here. But the reality is there's only one face and it only faces in one direction. So in order to show you that, I'm going to hit the N key, and it's going to bring up this menu to the right. And if we scroll down here, under shading, there's the back face calling. I'm going to go ahead and check that box. Now if we rotate underneath of our plane, you can see straight through it. It's still going to show the edges, but basically you can see through it. And what that eventually boils down to is the fact that there are these things called um, UVs and UVs basically reflect the light when light comes at them and they only reflect in one direction. So in this case the plane has a UV that faces upward and when light comes down it bounces off the surface. Now since this plane here is reflecting in one direction when light comes up from the underside it's just going to go ahead and pass straight through because there's nothing reflecting it. So that's one thing to keep in mind when creating objects like this. And we'll see it in the game engine too. But we want to set the size of this. And if we look over at this pane to the right, uh, the dimensions of this panel are 2 meters by 2 meters by 0 meters. Well, let's go ahead and make a 1 meter object. So what we're going to do here is we're going to select the first one. And we'll just type in with the uh, 1 key. 
and we'll do the same thing for the Y. And we can leave the Z at zero. So what we're going to have now is a one meter by one meter uh, plane. And then you'll notice over here above the dimensions, there's the scale. It'll change the scale of the object. And one thing you generally want to make sure of is that the scale is one to one when you export out. It'll just prevent any kind of issues. So in order to set the scale of our object, I'm going to hold control and hit A. And then we're going to set the rotation and scale. And you'll notice that the scale all comes down to ones. Then also, if you end up rotating it, it'll change the rotation above that. And when you control A, it will go ahead and zero out the rotation as well. So now we have a one meter by one meter plane. And we can use this to kind of tile within our engine to create a block out for our level. Now we're going to have to do some prep work in order to go ahead and get this ready for Unreal Engine. So in the right hand side here, there is the data tab here, which is the three dots with the connected lines. And down here, we're going to have a section with UV maps. Now we're going to want to go ahead and create a UV map for this object. And one thing to understand about UV maps is basically you're making a 2D representation of a 3D object. In this case, we only have a 2D object, but when you get into something like a cube or more complex objects, it's basically cutting the item apart so that you can fold it flat onto a 2D image. So what we're going to need is a, another window. So at the top right here, you're going to see these little angled lines. So if we left click with that with our mouse and drag it over, it's going to create the second window. And I'm going to go ahead and hide this left menu by hitting the T key. And I'm going to hide this right menu here by hitting the N key. And then down at the lower left here where the little cube is, I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to go into the UV image editor. And this will be our 2D image that we want to create. So on our left here, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to hit the tab button. And that's going to bring us from object mode into edit mode. And you can tell what mode you are in down at the bottom here. It'll show you edit mode. So if I hit the tab key again, it'll bring us into object mode tab. It'll bring us into edit mode. Or you could select from the menu here, but it's generally faster to just use the tab key. So once we're in edit mode here, I'm going to go ahead and hit A so that everything in here is selected. And the A key will select all or deselect all. So if I hit A when everything is, uh, is already selected, it'll go ahead and everything will be grayed out because nothing is selected. If I hit A again, it's going to select everything. And then to the left here, we're going to go to our shading and UV tab. And I prefer to use the faces shading, which I'm not going to get too much into, but it generally determines how the faces are shaded. So if you have a flat surface, you're going to want the faces set to flat. Or if you have like a pipe or something round and smooth, you're going to want to use the smooth shading. So we'll set it to flat shading. And then we have to create the 2D image over here. And this is going to be really simple because we only have a plane. We don't have to go ahead and mark any seams or do anything complicated. We're just going to go to this unwrap menu and we're going to select unwrap. And you're going to see over here that it created our plane in a 2D image. And then underneath our UV maps, we now have a UV map. And the UV map is used for, like I already explained, the reflection of light. But if you also have a texture, you can apply a texture to the UV map. So when you end up creating materials and say you have a 2D image for it in the background, this determines how that image is applied to your object. And I'm not going to get too in depth in that because I've actually decided within my game to go ahead and use flat shading. So I'm just going to use basic solid colors for all my materials and it's all going to be flat shaded. Now, one other thing we have to do is we want to create a light map for our object as well. 
And what a light map does is when you're in the Unreal Engine and you make a map and you drop stuff in, there's that little red message to the top left that's going to come up and say, do you want to build lighting? So many objects are unbuilt. And basically what you do when you build it is it takes all of the static objects within the environment that don't move and it will take the lighting and it will go ahead and basically pre-render the shading on those objects. And that's what it uses the light map for is it's basically once again a 2D image of your object and it goes and it bakes the uh, shadows and the lighting up against that 2D image so that when the game goes to actually render it it has a pre-rendered image and it just applies it to the object. The one thing to note is that in our UV map you can have faces overlapping each other. So if you have like a texture behind this and you have like 20 different faces here you can set them to overlap each other and it's not going to cause an issue. With a light map the light map can't have any faces overlapping each other at all. So we're going to go over here to our UV maps and to the right there's the plus button. I'm going to go ahead and click the plus button and it's going to generate a second map. And we need another UV map, but this one has to be a little bit different. The face here is what you would call an island. And we need some spacing out from the edges of the image and spacing from any other islands, if there are any. In our case, there's not, so we don't really have to worry about it. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go up to Unwrap. And I'm going to use Smart UV Project. And it's going to go ahead and bring up this menu right here. And since we have a plane and it's a very simple object, we don't have to really unwrap anything. But you'll see that the second option in here is the Island Margin. So I'm going to click in there and I'm going to set it to 0.05 because that's I've been using that and it's kind of seemed to work out the best for me. And then we're going to go ahead and with our UV map 01 here selected, click on the OK button. So it's going to go ahead and it's going to push the edges of our plane inward from the outside. And the reason we don't want these islands to line up is when it generates the lighting in Unreal Engine, there's some bleeding over the edges of the faces. So if this was to be full size, the image actually wraps around. So if we had shading over here and light on the right side, the shading from our left side could bleed over onto the right side or vice versa, the light side could bleed over onto the left side. And you can get weird things like objects that aren't lit having light edges or objects that are well lit having dark edges. Now, since we have a plane, this is very simple, but a rule to keep in mind when generating these UV maps and when going ahead and marking seams and everything is that the general rule of thumb for light maps is you want to disconnect edges if they are sharper angles. And there's no real hard and fast rule on this, but if you have like a rounded edge, say like we just had a cylinder, the lighting would naturally bleed around the edges of the cylinder. So since it's a lower angle between the different planes in the 3D object, uh, you would actually end up keeping them all connected together and you wouldn't want them all to separate out into separate islands. But we have our UV map done and we have our light map done on our object. So we're gonna go ahead and we wanna get ready and export this out to Unreal Engine. And we haven't assigned a material to our plane yet, but we don't really need to. When we export it out, it's going to assign a generic material to our plane, and then we can actually set that up inside of Unreal Engine. And as another note, I'm not gonna really be dealing with materials inside of Blender, because I wanna set up all the materials inside of Unreal Engine. So we're gonna go up to the top here, we're gonna go to File, and we're going to save as, and you can give this name, uh, this file, whatever kind of name you want. Uh, we can just call this our block out template. And we'll go ahead and save as a Blender file. And then the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to go to File, and we're going to go to Export, and we're going to go to FBX. 
And down here at the lower left, we're going to have to set some stuff up in order to export it out properly. If you're dealing with multiple objects in a scene and you only want to export one object, you can select them in the main window and uh, check this selected objects box right here. But we only have one object, so it really doesn't matter or not. And then we're going to down here click on this mesh button because we're just outputting a static mesh. And then we're going to click on the geometries tab. And for smoothing here, I prefer to use the face. Uh, it depends on what kind of smoothing you use on your object but I set it to face smoothing. So I'm gonna use the face for our smoothing. And then at the top, you'll see it gives us a name based on our file. So it's our blockout template.fbx. And you can select where you want it to go ahead and export to. I have a folder just for my Blender files for this game. So I'm gonna to go to the right and we're gonna click on export FBX. So once we have that done, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna switch over to Unreal Engine. And I'm actually going to make a map just to test out all of our meshes that we end up bringing in. So let's go to File. We're going to create a new level. And we'll just use the default level. So that way there's lighting and other stuff that's in it. And there's a player start. And we could kind of check out what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to delete the floor object that's in here. And we'll just go ahead and save it as... We'll call it our import test map. And then uh, we'll go ahead and we want to import our file. Now you can either drag and drop or use the import button. And we can navigate to where our file is located. And we'll find the blockout template FBX. And we'll go ahead and click on open. And then for our options in here, uh, import as skeletal needs to be unchecked. Uh, we can go ahead and auto generate the collision, which I will get into. So that'll be fine like that. And then one thing we're going to want to uncheck here is generate light map UVs. We already made a light map UV for our plane, so we don't need Unreal Engine to generate a light map for us. And then down for materials and textures, we didn't use any materials or textures. So I'm just going to go ahead and uncheck that. We don't really need those. And then I'm just going to go ahead and hit import. And so now our static mesh is added into the game. And if we double click on that, it's going to bring up the editor for our static mesh or the details for our static mesh. And if we head over to our options over here, there's a default material that is assigned to it. Um, and the other thing is, since we have a single-sided object, if we move to the bottom and underneath of it, just like before, we're going to be able to see through it, which is perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. And we're going to go ahead and to the right-hand side here, there is an option for double-sided. See if I can find it. Here we go under static mesh settings. It'll have double sided geometry. I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And up at the top here, you can click on the UV button. And there's two channels in here that we created the first one, which is our UV channel, and the second one, which is that smaller light map channel that it's going to be using. So you can check that out. Um, Another thing to note is if you click on wireframe, you'll see that it basically took our single plane with four corners and one face and cut it in half. And in general, game engines use tri polys instead of quads. So if you use four sided faces when you go ahead and import it over, it is going to go ahead and cut the four sided faces into three sided faces. So that's just something to note. In general, when working in the modeling software, you want to use four-sided faces. And the other thing we want to take a look at is our collision here. So if we click on collision, um, we're going to see these light blue lines on our um, mesh, which is going to be the actual wireframe 
uh, that we're using before that we took a look at, but there's nothing in here for collision. So if we go up to our collision here, you can add different types of collision to it. But the one thing I've really noticed about Unreal Engine is it doesn't like adding collision to planes. So if we want to go ahead and add some collision to our plane, we're going to go up to the collision tab up here. And we're going to go ahead and add a box simplified collision. And it's really hard to see because it overlaps the blue lines that were in there before. But there are these green lines now at the outside of our plane. So that is going to go ahead and provide some collision for our plane. So we're going to go ahead and hit save. And then over here in our right, we can go ahead and set up different settings for it. Once we create materials, we can create a default material for this. Um, if you end up importing different levels of detail, you can set that up, but I'm not going to be doing that. Um, you can set the collision presets right here. Um, since it's a static mesh, block all is going to work for everything. If you want to add like special collision modifiers, you can set that up. And really, that's all we're going to need to do. So I'm going to go back over to our import test map. I'm going to go ahead and set our snap sizes to 50. And we're going to go ahead and drag and drop our plane into the world. And for the settings here, I'm just going to set it to all the uh, locations to zero. And it should sit right underneath our collision sphere here. So we're just going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and duplicate a whole bunch of these. and line them all up with each other. And we want to test the collision to make sure our character doesn't fall through. So we'll just make a surface like that. Um, and then we're going to have to go to our blueprint as well. So we're going to open our level blueprint. And because we set up our HUD to automatically do the loading screen. We're going to have to get rid of the loading screen. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this event tick. And we'll go ahead and search for get controller. We'll get the player controller. And we'll go ahead and we'll get our HUD. And then we're going to go ahead and cast this to our HUD. And then finally, as our HUD, we're going to go ahead and we're going to set the current widget. And we're going to set it to our gameplay widget. So I'll just compile that and close. So if we go ahead and hit play, I can go ahead and stand on top of our floor here. And it's casting a shadow. So the collision for these guys is working. So I'm going to go ahead and exit out of that. And you'll notice the shadowing is really messed up right now because we haven't really built our lighting. Uh, let's go ahead and create some quick walls so I can show you real quick how this is going to work. So I'm going to rotate these to the side here. And we'll go ahead and create like a wall object here. And you'll notice if you swing out to the side, you can see through it. And I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this over here. And we'll go ahead and rotate it around. And just slide it into position at the end of these over here. And let's go ahead and we're going to go and build our lighting. All right, so our lighting build is complete. And you'll notice that our lighting isn't affected 
inside of here. So these walls aren't casting shadows up against our objects right here. So that is something you're going to have to keep in mind when dealing with these different planar objects. So that is one thing to keep in mind is that these planes, because they don't have UVs on one side of them, are not going to go ahead and cast shadows on other meshes when the light originates from behind the plane. And this is going to be really an environmental decision that you're going to have to make for your game. A lot of the asset packs are designed for multi-use situations. So they'll have cubes or deformed cubes that they use for their different plates that are going to block light from all directions. But you also have to consider when using those, you're drawing a whole lot of extra geometry that you may or may not need. In the case of my game, it's going to be inside of a space station. So I'm not really going to have any external lighting that is going to penetrate through these faces. So another option is if you really need blocked out lighting, you can go ahead and copy this and rotate it around and create a face facing the opposite direction as well to block out lighting. And really it comes down to when you're designing your game, what you're going to need and what you're going to not going to need. The problem with using something like in the asset pack where it has all sides blocked over is if you're only seeing one face of the object, you're still having to draw the other faces. So if I have a cube here, a cube has six sides to it. And if I'm using this as a wall over here, let me just go ahead and get rid of these faces real fast. Kind of a pain in the ass because it's all separated objects. And we still have this face over here that I rotated around. So we'll get rid of that. So if you have like a hallway or something, for example, and you just end up scaling this cube to here, and we can make it a little bit bigger, like so. Um, one thing to really keep in mind here is if you're inside the hallway and you never see the outside of this object here, the user's computer is going to have to render all of those faces and it's going to have to do the shading for all of the faces. Now, if we have one object like this that is scaled out to this length, then it's not going to be that much of an issue. But if you have like an asset pack where you have wall segments and you stack these wall segments along and it has to draw all these extra faces here. So instead of, for example, on this side here, I have a three by six panel right here of faces. Um, if you have that all in assets, you're drawing an extra five faces per that, and there's a total of 18 here. So you're going to be drawing an extra 80 faces. Um, so that can add up over the course of a level. So that is one thing you're going to have to kind of take in way when designing meshes for your level. If you take a look at some of the sample content that Unreal has uh, released, you'll notice that a lot of it is only one-sided geometry. So if you're going to go ahead and create your own meshes, it's definitely going to give you a chance to optimize the environment and draw less objects and less faces than you actually have to. And once you get like a blackout layout for this, like say I like the walls at three meters tall, and I go ahead and draw, um, design the uh, wall panel, I can go ahead and make this into one object that's just three meters by however many meters long. So instead of drawing these 18 separate individual objects, I can create one large panel that is going to take the place of this, and it's only going to draw one object instead of 18. And so that's generally going to be the workflow of getting things, uh, at least static meshes, from Blender to Unreal Engine. It's, it changes up a little bit when you're dealing with characters and skeletons, but we're going to get to that hurdle when we get to it. So for right now, we have a blocking out instrument that we can use to kind of block out the level. 
and it can give us an idea of dimensions. So if you start laying things out and you're like, okay, I need a hallway here that's five meters across and 10 meters long, because there's 10 of these objects in here, you can then return to Blender, create a floor panel that is 10 meters by five meters, and then replace all of these little objects here with that one single object. So that's gonna complete today's video. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave them down below. Or you can stop by my Facebook page and you can message me or comment over there. And thanks for watching.